Hi, John back with a video about bike marshalling. Um, I took bike marshalling up probably three to four years after I started doing car marshalling. Probably, I think it was three years. Um, just started off doing a few of the British Superbike events. Um, then once I'd passed my training after 12 events, um, 12 days, um, I went and did World Superbikes <clears throat> at Donington and at Silverstone. Um, I went on to do MotoGP at Silverstone. Um, the year after I did MotoGP, I did a British Superbike round at Silverstone. Um, and it was a wet race on one of the support races. I think it was the Superstock 500s or Superstock 5000s or Super Sport, I think it was. I'm not too sure. I am going to put a link down below in the description where you can see a video of what I'm about to go through um, and explain to you. This was an accident that happened on Cops Corner, which was the first corner on the old style layout of Silverstone from the old start finish line and pits. Um, it was a wet race. Um, came round, did the warm up, went back round, no issues. Um, did the proper race start, and I always look forward wherever the racetrack was coming towards me. The racing, I always used to watch it because then you can see anything that's going to happen. Rather than watching the race go by, you you're going to miss something. So always look at what's coming towards you, and I can still picture it now. One of the riders came off. And all see then is as he's sliding across, another bike goes over his legs. Um, that then led to about six or seven riders going off the bikes, the rest of the field going round. Eventually about three or four others fell off at different points. Um, we obviously had six riders on our one post. Um, as I said, this chap, you saw what had happened. Um... Our team had been split into two. The first half dealt with the first part of the corner, the second half dealt with the next part. I was in the second part that dealt with just after the corner. Um, I ended up picking up about three bikes um, and one bike as well also had, you had a set of front forks that had come off, the tyres had come off, the petrol tank had come off, the rear tyre had come off. Um, the handlebars had smashed to pieces, literally it was everywhere, pieces of bike everywhere from these six riders, seven riders. Um, it took us about 30 to 40 minutes to clear all this rubbish up. Um, going back to when that incident first happened, the, drive, the rider had been run over, he tried to stand up, I saw him standing up thinking, oh he's okay, it's not actually caught him, it's just probably gone over him probably be a bit sore so we left that group to it um, we then went back after we picked all these pieces up and cleared the track um, they tried to cut away the overalls so they could access this chap's leg because he was saying it was hurting him as they pulled the boot and the overall his leg you could see basically it had been almost severed it was hanging on by a couple of threads um, there was blood, literally a great big pool of blood all around him where all this blood had come from his leg. Um, they got him all sorted, strapped up as best they could with the ambulance that was there in the medical centre. Um, obviously we have a big medical centre, you've got two helicopters there at all times. Um, one to take someone to hospital, one there as a standby, so if there's another accident they can go as well. Plus you've got the med centres that's fully equipped like any theatre, any hospital. They've got everything in there, all the drugs they'll need, all the medical supplies, plus loads more. It's always fully stocked, ready, just in case. Um, so this driver went there and eventually then went by helicopter to the hospital. Um, he had several operations. His leg was in a cage for quite a long time. Um, it took quite a while to heal, but he is back racing now. This is probably going back to like 2010, I think it was. Um, not 100% sure, but the date will be in with the description and on the actual 
YouTube video of the accident as well. Um, only watch the video if you're not too screamish about seeing all these accidents and what happens. You don't actually see the actual blood and anything else, but it's something that's stuck with me now all these years. And after that event, I only did one more bike race. And after that, I just didn't, I wasn't interested. I've never been interested since. I won't even watch motorbikes race on TV. When the motorbikes used to go up the hill at Goodwood, I would ask, can I stand down because I want to go walk around, just so I avoid being anywhere near the bikes, to be honest, because although Goodwood's different and it's only one bike at a time or a row of bikes going up just as a display, not going really fast, I just don't like the thought of what could happen after seeing what I've seen there. So I won't do bikes ever again. Um, just I had a week off sick just because I kept feeling nauseous and feel like I was going to be sick myself all the time. Um, couldn't get it out of my mind. Now I understand what happened a bit more and yes it was the rider's choice but as a marshal having to deal with that and seeing that I don't want to see that again. Um, so I won't do bikes ever again. Um, so yeah, won't watch it on telly, won't watch it in person, won't want any involvement in it at all. Um, don't want a motorbike. Wouldn't fancy my son having one when he's a bit older because of what happened. I know it's a bit different to having your own bike to being on a racetrack and that happening. Um, but that's the sort of bad side of it, I suppose. You can have these sort of accidents that happen. Um, in a way, it's good that this driver, this rider is back and he's racing again, but all the stuff he's gone through, what I actually saw happen, that did it for me. Never be interested in that again. So, again, as the last video, any questions, please feel, please feel free to ask. Do it in the comments. Um, watch the video if you want to. See what you think. Um, bear in mind, you don't actually see it, but I've described what happened that day. Um, so again thanks for watching just thought these two videos would be good to share with people what I actually did as a marshal um, when I go back hopefully to the cars I, I look forward to going back eventually may or may not happen for several more years but I've already spoke to a few people who I've worked with before on the same post and they sort of says well regardless of what grade you are when you come back because technically, if I don't do it for two years, you have to go back to a trainee. So if I have to go back as a trainee, okay, fine. But they said we will always accept you as an experienced marshal because we know you're capable of doing it. You've done it for so many years. As long as nothing has changed about how you react and how you deal with things, they won't class it as being a trainee. They'll use me in the way that they would want me to which was doing what I did before. I'd be put with a group of new starters. Right, you're with them, anything happens, it's up to you if you take them or if they come with you, you look after them. It used to work well, they used to get involved. Everyone did something. If there was a major incident, I was one of the first few sent out because we had the experience to understand it. So, that's it for now. Um, again, thank you for watching and I'll be back with another video soon. Bye for now.